Most of the, the things we see in the video are what you would see on a typical city tour. I mean, they're the main uh, kind of big tourist attractions. And um, we were with two guides at all times. Um, and within that, there were things we could and could not shoot. For example, military locations, military mm -hmm. personnel, um, and uh, construction sites, and uh, weather statues, the leaders, for instance. So we were, we're did not the guides to um, them in frame. explain to you why you couldn't shoot these particular uh, locations, like military sites, construction sites? Yeah, there was a reason. I mean, uh, it, it, wasn't, it did not kind of restrict the story we wanted to tell. I mean, more broadly, broadly it's a story of Pyongyang and the people there. Um, and a lot of the sites we saw, you know, there was, we got to experience quite a lot of, of life within, um, yeah, within the, that remit as such. So uh, with these restrictions given by the government, don't you think that what you filmed is the unreal part of Pyongyang and you didn't really see the real North Korea? What is, uh, I mean, what is the real part? Um, what we saw is humans living in a city, going about their everyday lives. Uh, and I think it reflects that. I mean, in a city like Pyongyang, there are people that need to eat, they need to shop, they need to, you know, go to work, they need to commute, they need to do hang out, go to skate parks, and it presents that. And I'm just curious, uh, Rob, why only Pyongyang? Why did you not expand it beyond the capital, where <laughs> there are a lot of poor people yeah, we have, outside we have... of the capital? Understood. We had four days to shoot it, and uh, as a profession, I make city videos. That's my specialty. So Pyongyang was the idea, was the brief, and that was the proposition. And that's all the time we had to actually capture it. And, and you know, uh, judging by the response, it seems to have been quite popular and uh, kind of achieved quite a lot of interest.